Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So we're here, Vabtech 2019, here in uh, beautiful Chicago, Illinois. It's freezing outside. We've got a bunch of classes we're going to be doing with Aesop University. Some classes over Weld. Dude. Well, I'm off it. Sorry, I'm, you could join us, Sorry, man. I'm like, what, day four? Day four. We had to wait for uh, day four to shoot. Yeah, uh, we got work to do. We got a lot uh, of work to do. All right, well, let's go catch up. We got uh, we got to do uh, Jimmy McKnight. We got to do a podcast. Yeah. Employability skills. You can't do that when you show up late. No, no. So we, de we definitely got to be on time. We got to lead by example. <laughs> all, right, all right, guys, we'll see you on the inside. All right. Okay, so if you've never been to Fabtech before, I highly suggest you get out there and give it a shot. This place is just massive. There's so much to see and so much to do. So one of the booths we stop by is the Zyrus. We get questions all the time. Hey, how do you guys get those arc shots? What type of camera are you using? This is it. And we actually just got the new color version in. So it also uh, has that, that film in color. And now they have one with a microphone. So you can actually hear the weld. So operators are actually able to film remotely and weld remotely with uh, robotic applications. And they can actually see and hear exactly what's going on. They can watch the puddle you get a lot better field of vision through the camera than you do through your own welding hood. So that's one of the advantages of it. So it's a Zyrus camera. They have it black and white. They have it color. The new one has the microphone on it, so you can make all your adjustments you know, on the fly. You don't have to be there right there with the robot. All right, so next up, we stop by the Abacor Benzel booth, and they've got this tungsten grinder. Now, the one on the right over there, that's the one we currently have in our shop. Their new model has an auto grind mode. So depending on the diameter of the tungsten, how long you want to run it for, you just set the timer hit the button and it rotates the tungsten as it's grinding the whole time. You can set all the way from zero to 90 degree angles on there, whatever you, know, whatever you like as a welder, whatever your procedure's calling for. So another neat feature is this thing will go all the way from like 040 tungsten up to 3 16 diameter. Uh, they may have bigger sizes available, but I mean, that's pretty much what we use in the shop. Usually 040 to eighth inch is where we kind of cut the mark at. But these things are really cool. You get a consistent grind angle every single time. And this is the new solutions torch that they have out. Now, you guys have probably seen us use that in different videos. I know Jeff Ray has one down in his facility. This thing is amazing. Whether you need a, a, a pen style, a number 26 torch, a number 9 torch, it has it all. You have stackable flex necks, so if you have hard to reach places, you'll be able to get into it with this. Now, this thing is really cool. I thought this was awesome. So, Bosch and Ferd kind of hooked up and they developed this new X lock system. Gone are the days of you know you having to sit there and play with your nuts while you're trying to get the grinding wheel on there. And on the back side, you just pull that little tab and it clicks right back out. It is a very secure connection. Uh, you're not able to pull that off. You actually have to press that lever to be able to take the wheel off. The cool thing is, is that every abrasive that Ferd makes, whether it's a flapper wheel, cutoff wheel, wire wheel, they have that patent on that technology and they have that X-Lock system on every one of their, their grinding wheels. And it's also compatible with a, a typical 5 8 arbor. Now this thing's really cool. This is the Victograin from Ferd. This thing, it just chews through metal completely. We're actually gonna get some in the shop, so we'll probably do an in-depth video on this in the future, but this thing just tears up metal. So, you know, it'd be great for taking off backing strips, you know, whatever the case may be. And you can see there's not much wear. I mean, we took an inch and a half out of that angle. There's not much wear on the blade. It actually has these little triangles that are in there, and as those triangles break or wear down, they form another triangle, so it cuts just as good, you know, as it wears. All right, so we made our way out to the weld porn booth and we had to try on this new necklace made by Dabs Wellington. This thing's a work of art. You've probably seen this all over social media lately. You know, during Fabtech, everybody was getting a picture taken with it. Now, this is the Praxair fume extraction system with the, the Abacor Benzel gun. We've actually used this in the shop. We've done a couple videos on it. This thing is just amazing and it just completely sucks up all the fumes. Remember, we did a video on it so you don't have to worry about pulling your shielding gas out, but it will continuously suck fumes. They also have a mobile unit, and this thing is a beast. It will stay exactly where you put it. So wherever, wherever you need it, you get it within 20 inches of where you're working at, and it's going to pull all the fumes away from your face. You have different locking mechanisms. That's what's going to hold it in place. Other systems don't have this. They use counterweights, you know, so the thing doesn't necessarily stay where you put it. And this thing is strong, too. I mean, it literally sucks. So, I mean, that's a full-size bar stool. It picks that thing up no problem. All right, so then we made it over to the, to the Kwiki booth, and Mike, our resident CNC expert, had a chat with them, talking about some of the new features that they have on their Shop Pro. It actually has a pipe beveling uh, accessory, you know, that you just bolt right to the side of the table. And then this piece right here flips down, change the torch head, reset your zero. You can cope, you can bevel, you can do artwork, whatever you need to on pipe. 
and it's going to rotate it. It's got a three jawed chuck at the end. This thing will do up to, I think, six inch schedule 80 pipe. So if you have to do any funky angles, saddle it, cope it, cut circles out, whatever you need to, uh, this thing's capable of doing it. And then you can just flip that piece back up and then get back to sheet cutting. So it's a pretty intuitive design, very handy, and very simple, simple to use and easy to operate. Just pops back in there, flip the tray up out of the way, lock it back down, and you're ready to go cut plate again. So once we were done over at Quickie, we headed back over to the ESOB booth. We actually did seven classes for ESOB this year with the Weld.com crew rotating between Man Cub, Bob, and myself. So those are going to be available soon, uh, but ESOB just had so much going on in this booth. Pretty much any one of their products, any application you could think of, they had a booth set up where you could actually try it. So we have an oxyacetylene artist here, Madero underscore CO. This guy is just amazing what he does with oxyfuel welding and brazing as far as artwork projects. This thing is it's really cool what he's able to do. Ran into uh, Mikey from WeldTube. He was over there doing some MIG welding. Caught him by surprise. He got all excited to see us. But uh, it was a great community, great time. And we definitely had to go over to Fireball. We, you've seen us use the Fireball tools in, uh, in recent videos. We had to go get a full explanation from Jason. So here we go guys, this is what we have for the newest squares to add to the product line. These are what I call the little minion squares, they're my little, my little helpers in my pocket I call them. We got a left and right opposite version, and they got four, four inches wide, six inches tall with a 30, 60, 90 degree angle on them. These ones here are made out of cast iron and then black oxide coated. And what's a cool feature we've added onto these new squares are we got uh, tapped holes on the face and the back of them, so you're able to use these little toolless fasteners to position our little tabs anywhere you want for a three dimension work holding. So you're able to set up a set of parallels. Maybe you want to set something like seven inches wide. You're able just to clamp them together. Adjustability, something tall, something narrow. Get some flexibility there for some parallelism. So this is a nice small compact square for tight spaces. This is the cast iron mega square. And this was my first original invention design. And what Jason requested is, um, even though they're small, maybe you want to reach over and grab something vertical, be able just to clamp, step over, and hold and clamp your work. So that way you can still get in here and weld. But a lot of times you're not able to pinpoint where you want to work hold. So I came up with this. This is a swivel base plier which it swivels on your existing clamps, okay? So now I can choose what hole I want to put my fixture in. And I can swivel it. And I can pinpoint right where I want to hold. So now I can push this clamp out of my way and have weld accessibility. So that's a real nice feature. This is new for Fireball. You can buy just the swivel base or the whole clamp together. All right, after we left the Fireball tools, Right across the way was uh, Joe Young with AWS. They're running the 2019 Fabtech uh, welding competition. What we got going on here is the AWS Professional Welder Competition. Really, it's a competition based on speed, skill, and quality. Okay. And that's kind of the bottom line. We've got a little sample here. i to show you one of the orientations of the project. Okay. Pretty slick. Um, E7018, eighth inch rod. Burn it in there. So totally. what's, uh, what's the winner get other than bragging rights? Oh boy. Well. After you pay your $15 entry fee, you get a shirt over there, and then you get a goodie bag, and then the top winner will get $12.50 in cash, and then obviously bragging rights, and then second, third place, and all the top 10 winners also receive prizes. All right, I think it's my turn, let's do it. All right, let's get shooted up, get your gear on. All right. We got Man Cub over here, we got Jason over here. We're down to about five minutes. We'll see what they can do. Oh, it's gonna be like that. Time's up. Done. Machines off. Hoods up. Let's see what you got. What do we have? All right. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Final minute. Go in there. Okay. Not too shabby. You better take the CWIs. Let them have a good look. I can't expect my own work. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to clean mine. What happened? What happened, Mike? Did you get it done? Yeah, it's alright. It's good. Oh, man. Yeah, right. You see yours? You guys didn't even hit it with a wire brush? No. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
So we made our way over to the metal forming side. So a lot of people, you know, they just stick around where the welding's at. There's actually an entire separate area for metal forming, shearing, coping, cutting, punching, all kinds of stuff. So we stopped by the guys over at uh, Roper Whitney and they showed us some of the capabilities on their new auto brake system. This thing is crazy. I mean, any configuration you can think of, this thing is able to do. The head actually flips around to where you have finger brakes on one side and then you have a flat finger on the other side. So you can do all kinds of, uh, you know, tiny bends, small bends, very accurate, uh, you know, just very tight pieces, different setups. Uh, this thing's just amazing with what it's, what it's capable of doing. And it runs it all off CNC. The operator still has to uh, manipulate the foot pedal, but it has little back stops. So, you know, there's, there's no guessing where your lines are. And this was made out of a full sheet of material to begin with. And you can see the complex amount of bends that are in there. I mean, we sped the footage up. That, that whole thing, he was able to crank that out in about five minutes. So now, a lot of you, if you've been in the welding industry for any amount of time, you've been told at one point or another to go find the metal stretcher. Well, guess what? It actually does exist. And that's exactly what this, mach this machine does. You're able to shrink and stretch to get different profiles and curvatures. It's a pretty cool machine. He also takes this piece right here, this circular plate, and he makes a, a bowl out of it. Again, this probably took maybe five minutes. We sped it up for the sake of video. But once he's done, I mean, this thing turned out pristine condition. So you can cap pipes. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with this. Ornamental, architectural, uh, there's really no limit. This thing actually clamps down and, and pulls the metal apart or brings it together with the different dies that it has on there. So we made our way over to air gas and they have this new Arcal system where you order the bottle the bottle comes completely full it has quick disconnects and connects for all your lines the valve to open it and close it is just a single valve so gone are the days of continuously twisting the handle open and close and now you also have a visual indicator of whether that bottle is turned on or it's in the off position. So just from across the shop, you can tell whether you need to close that bottle for the day. It has a built-in flow meter, so you don't even have to buy flow meters or regulators for these bottles anymore. It, everything comes in just as you see it here. You swap out the bottle, you get a new one, you just connect your line and set it and you're good to go. Now this is the new Bot X system from ReadyArc. It's a, a, what it's called is a, a Cobot. And what that means is you can work with it right next to, a human being can work right next to it. The cool thing about this, you don't have to really go through and, and move everything manually with a pendant anymore. You can grab it, drag it where you need it, click the button for your start, drag it where you want it to end, click the button for the stop, and it develops its own program to complete that weld. You can do circular, you can go in squares, you can do T-joints, fillets, lap joints, and he controls everything from an app on his cell phone. They can also control it remotely from their cell phone and check out your welding procedure if you're having problems with it. It's a really Really nice piece of rental equipment from ReadyArc. And it's very accurate, easy to change you know, on the fly. Uh, you can manipulate everything. You can still kind of use this, the cell phone as a teach pendant. It's kind of built into the app where you can move it around. Okay, so this is the new robotic plasma cutting system for coping and notching and putting holes in I-beams. This thing's just amazing with the precision and how fast it's able to move. And everything on it's automated. Walked over to our friends over at Pier. They got some new uh, tension bars uh, for positioning, you know, fixing things where you need to go. You can, you know, move things in and out with these bars up and down. Possibilities are endless. These guys make awesome clamps. All right, so we're kicking around, uh, walking through the show. Decided to stop here at AWS, take a break, and ran into an old friend, Stephanie Hoffman. Uh, we actually met at the Instructors Institute with AWS, and then from there, kind of both of our careers have just shot off. So, Steph, what are you doing with AWS now? All right, so I went from just a regular old welder, then welding instructor to a program manager of workforce development uh, for the AWS Foundation. And what does that mean, like in a nutshell? What, what exactly do you do? Uh, that means a lot of time away from home. Uh, I travel the country 18 weeks a year with the Careers and Welding trailer that's sponsored by Lincoln Electric. Uh, this year we gave out $49,000 in scholarships to students across the United States. So wait, before you go any further, what, what do you have to do to win one of these scholarships? Uh, so you're going to come on the trailer and the highest score on the Vertex 360 for the day will win a thousand bucks. Scholarship's good for five years, so even a student that's a freshman in high school 
doesn't have to necessarily use it right away. They would have five years to redeem it. So it's forty nine thousand dollars. Awesome opportunity. Yeah, it is an awesome. Opportunity. We're going to continue it again next year. So highly encourage everybody to uh, come out and check out the trailer for sure. No, I mean that's great because I mean you guys came out to Lakeland, mm -hmm. and I sent some students over there to help volunteer. So that's yep. kind of what you guys are looking for right now is volunteers for these events absolutely you can't do it on your own yeah and you know me going and traveling the country I'm from the East Coast I'm very aware of you know the programs and opportunities career-wise in you know the New Jersey New York Philadelphia area but when I'm traveling the country I really need support of uh, students educators uh, welders in the area employers in the area AWS members, um, all of this is integral in the success of the trailer and promoting the mission of, you know, gathering up and influencing kids to want to become welders themselves. So how do people find out about like where the, where the trailer is going to be? Because I know every year it's different. You guys yep. set up different events every year. Yep. So how, where can people go to find out more information on where you're going to be and then how to you know come in and assist and volunteer yeah so the 2019 trailer schedule is is complete now i finished my last uh event last week at ffa um the new schedule for 2020 will be rolling out pretty shortly hopefully within the next couple of months um you can check out careersandwelding.com um that's always kind of updated with trailer information you can also follow my instagram under underground metalworks um you'll be able to find all the trailer information on there as well as the aws uh, Instagram and Facebook they'll be sharing all of the trailer dates as I as I get them I try and release them um, and then soon hopefully by you know February we should have a complete schedule okay yeah so I'm awesome. excited so keep an eye out all right well hopefully, guys we'll, uh, uh, people come out and hang out with me for a little no, while <laughs> the uh, before we head out I want to thank Stephanie for her service because today is Veterans Day so thank you for your service thank you Stephanie thank you. was the army you're welcome <laughs> thank you for your support um, so guys go ahead uh, check out all the information that Stephanie gave you Go ahead, volunteer. I went out there for the day. It's an awesome event. Uh, you get to preach the word about something that we're passionate about. So we all love welding. Why not you know, reach out to the, uh, the young viewers that are the young people that are coming in to the trade and kind of get them interested. Uh, bring them on the trailer, talk to them about your experience, uh, you know, run the Vertex a little bit, and yeah. just go out and have fun. Yeah. So uh, Stephanie, thanks for taking time. Yeah. All right, uh, we'll be seeing you later on tonight at the, uh, the reception dinner. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna take a nap. All right. Off to the next place. So we made our way over to Flame Tech, and you guys have probably seen this on Instagram. This chair that they built out of different cutting heads, fully functional, is freaking amazing. So Mike had to take the opportunity to hop on over there, kind of get in touch with his inner cut master, and you know, kind of find his center. So he's now one with the torch. This is a pretty neat setup that they have over there. It is a big, big crowd pleaser. All right, so this piece was made by the Welder Assassin on Instagram. It is the bike from John Wick 3. It's actually going to be given to Keanu Reeves, and the attention to detail is amazing. So we ran into the full cast and crew of WeldTube. I mean, they're part of the family, too. These guys, it's a great group of guys. That's the thing about Fabtech. You know, wherever you go, you're running into people you know. Uh, Mike's over here signing his first autograph. That's the Metals and How to Weld Them book from the American Welding Society. Definitely worth picking up. Arkansas Elite Welding Academy had this awesome they call it the boa restrictor and it really just kind of tests people's ability to get out of their comfort zone and you know get better before they get into the field so you know you're not making the same mistakes when you get out in the field so this is a welding hood that they had that are, they're planning on possibly auctioning it off for donations for the school and everybody signed the hood so you've got you know just a plethora of people on there autographs and slaps all over the place there you can see jimmy mcknight up in smoke welding apparel uh, Travis Fields, all kinds of good stuff. That's 18. That's 718. That's some good stuff, brother. That's good. That's good. Waiting on you, Holmes. Waiting on you. We go. Are you trying to race me? I am. No, I'm not even. I do want to raise my hood and check your progress, bro. No, I'm way ahead of you. Oh, I need to oh that's, a that's a smart right. that's a smart right. that's a smart 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 you know, I don't, 
Dude, that. Camera guy. Look at that. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Oh, man. You still want Woo! Uh oh. Oh, you did not want that to happen. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. All right, so these crazy pieces of artwork are done by Works by a Hearst, and the level of detail on these things is just out of the world amazing. He's done a, a Millennium Falcon version of this as well. I highly recommend you pulling it up on Instagram and checking it out. This is the new battery operated welder from Fronius. You can actually burn about 10 7018 8 inch sticks before you need to recharge on this, and it's completely portable. Man Cub got lippy again and challenged the cameraman to a vertex battle. And uh, needless to say, the camera guy didn't do so hot on this one. I think Mike oh beat him on that point. That's pretty bad. Simple here, feel free to use yourself center. And I'll start you in the corner of the joint. Uh, 79. Oh! <laughs> Man Cub won. By one point, though. We've been looking for a couple of pieces of, of equipment to add on to the shop, huh? Yeah, we've uh, been doing a little bit more fabrication, so we got to get something that's going to cut material up. Okay. Uh, we ran into Ren Gibbs here with Do-All. Ren seems to be a walking wealth of uh, knowledge on the saw industry here. Thank you. Uh, what do you have here with this saw, the 400S? This is the 400S series that we have here. This is our model that we still make in Savage, Minnesota, right here in the U.S. Um, you're looking at a throat size of about 10 by 16. We have a throat miner out that comes out 45 degrees. Uh, this is one of the workhorses in the sawing world right now. It's been around for a long this time. This saw has been around for a very long time. I, did, I used one of these back when I used to do iron work. We cut all the structural components and stuff. Okay. Yeah. A lot of handrail, guardrail, I beams, yep. square tubes, structural stuff. Say, we've had this thing in um, schools for a long time. I actually ran it when I was about. 15, 16 years old when I was in high school. So she's been around for a long time and she's definitely held up to the test of time. Yeah. We, sure. uh, we recently did a collaboration with A-Bomb 79 okay. and that's he's, he's got a do all saw in his shop. Awesome, I love to hear it. I mean, we've had a couple customers this week actually come up and tell us that they've had these things forever. Years, they're, yeah. The old green models, yep. they love them, they, they love these. This thing looks to be uh, feature packed over here with a lot of stuff going on with the vice and the and the speeds and yep. we'll run through some of that yeah, for us. No your control knob here, this is what's going to control your head rate, that fall. These knobs here you can get into rapid mode so you can get it to drop a little bit faster. You can turn the knob and actually set it into hold so that way she stays in hold and she'll stay up for you without anybody hitting your switch or anything like that for a little bit of so a So when you're in there moving stuff around you want to switch exactly. it over to hold? Yeah, I always say do it just in case you have one of those buddies that like to play with you in the shop. The next thing you know, they accidentally walk by and hit a switch on you. And you're safe and prepared for right. it. Um, and then you turn it up for when you want to be in your feed rate mode. This bottom switch here is your pneumatic vice control. You push her in. She shuts and clamps up for you. you pull her out. And she opens up for you to retrieve your material. And go from there and move forward. On the top, you have a head limit switch. She'll actually come up. Set her at the height that you want. We got her at three inches right now. We're running, uh, I believe it's a two and a half inch square tube on this. And she pops right back up when she finishes the cut and stops there for a production. Do you so, want to cover some of the some of the features on the, uh, the pedestal there? Definitely. On the pedestal here, you have your start button, your solid control switch. You can bring it up, bring the head up on it. We have the pin in so it's not going to raise up for us. You have a hold here as well. And then when you flip her down, now she's ready to be in auto mode and be controlled by that feed knob that like I showed you just a minute ago. You have your big red button for emergency stops. That way if anything goes on, the blade starts to crash or fail, you can just hit that button and it'll go right there for you. Um, you have your switch down here. This is your coolant control. This here, it can be packed with a feature of either a mist control system or you can run the flood. Um, it's completely up to the customer what they like to do. Me, if you're a structural house, I definitely recommend this because that way it's not actually flowing out and through the tube and making a mess all over the floor. Right. This machine, our 2013 V3, we've had this around for as long as I can remember. I still go into shops works, working on machines from 1940s that we made. Um, we used to have them in a battleship gray, we call it that because we actually used to install them on the Navy's battleships through World War II. Um, it was a great machine. 
Um, they're still all over the place. People buy them at auctions now, and they love them. They yeah. can't that's, get away that's from them. That's what I had uh, when I went to Weld School back Was in it? the 90s. Yeah. I mean, this, that's any garage shop, any um, schooling, tech schools, I suggest always having this. You have so many ways and features that you can do different things with them. It makes it just a wonderful feature on this as well. Um, this here actually has a glide table on it. We installed some safety features on here with this machine here. I can actually break the limit switch, power her up. As you can see, the lights lit up on it. Flip the light switch on so you have some extra light there. This blade now does not run. I hit the power button over here. She's not moving. You have to have both hands on and engaged, and that blade will come on. If you release one, she's going to come off. So now with this, I would imagine you'd have some sort of material stop. Yep, you'll have a material Clamp your stop material to it. with the T-block. Clamp her down, lock her in place, and you go straight through. Um, if you're doing a company that's doing a lot of uh, contour cutting, I definitely don't suggest this attachment with this table. We have other tables as well. You have your solid table, we have hydraulic tables, the whole nine, anything that you guys can ever think of. We can and then this table will actually Yep, this table rotate, actually so you rotates can, you can put bevels on there. Yep, she'll rotate side to side for you. Um, you have a 13-inch clearance on this one here. Um, band tension knob over here. And that's where your actual band tension reader is. So whatever size band you're running, we'll just match her up to that pin right there. You drop her in place and she stays in for you. In the back, you actually have a backup bearing that rotates. So when you put your feet pressure on it, she'll actually rotate for you and help keep that back edge straight and smooth moving for you as well. I mean, as you can tell, when I push on her, you can kind of see it rotate. Yeah, it rolls back and forth. Yep. You always want to make sure. The best way I've always said with the guide setting, you can pull it in and out, straight and back, but you can't go side to side. Okay. That's the biggest thing that I can suggest for you guys on that. Well, oh, you turned machine. this thing on a minute ago. Mm -hmm. I didn't even hear it. Yeah. I mean, I'm watching it. I didn't even hear it. You probably felt it. I didn't yeah, hear you it. could feel a little bit of vibration in there, but it's quiet. It's smooth. Yep. And that was actually, we had the main speed all the way up, actually, at that point in time. You're sitting there actually at 320 feet per minute on it. Wow. So she came on and you don't hear it. She is a quiet machine. Uh, a variety of materials and cut configurations yep. or, or tooth configurations as well. There's all kinds. We also tell you different blades that we still supply today. Um, it'll give you your feeds and speeds on this chart as well. I'm glancing up here at some of these material types and I'm cringing. Oh, you know, yeah. Chrome vanadium and, and yep. uh, tool steel. And there was another one up here that caught my eye. Uh, manganese nickel. I, I mean, I just glance up there and I'm thinking, work hard. You know, yep. just screaming at me. All right, Bob, what do you think? You ready to sign some paperwork? Get I her think we'll have back truck up here and, and uh, load this puppy up. What do you Take think? Take it right now? I uh, guess, yeah. yeah. Uh, why don't you go get us some coffee? We're gonna we're gonna fart around here and uh, load this thing up while you're gone. Is that all right? Hey, that works for me. I don't okay. mind one bit. So we're, we're actually uh, out, right? uh, you bet. We're you gonna bet. take both these pieces of equipment back to Largo with us. Uh, so there's gonna be new fixtures in our shop. We're gonna go through, show you guys how to use them, do some cool fabrication projects. Uh, looking forward to it. What do you think, Bob? Absolutely. Really Brent, looking forward to it. Thanks for your time, sir. No, I appreciate, appreciate it, it, gentlemen. You guys have a good one. All right. All right. Thank take you. care. Have a good show. Oh man, I you know. The science behind all this, the blade cut, the blade configurations, and tooth configurations, this is cool. I learned a lot right here. Did you? No, definitely. And I'm telling you, I glanced up here and I'm looking at some of that material type and I'm like, I'm scared. Tool steel, high manganese stuff. Good stuff though. Oh yeah, yeah. This thing was super smooth. All right, so we've got, we've got some interviews to do. We've also got to sit down at a panel today. Yeah. About employability skills definitely are you ready for that yeah man let's get to it okay let's get out and see some let's of the show it. on the way well let's go all right all right Woo! what a show i put in a whole two days worth you guys were here for huh oh, all yeah. of it it's been uh, it's been pretty busy you late you tardy you tardy nope on time we were on time okay well I'm supposed to lead by example uh, there, Bob. great show man i saw some cool stuff there was a ton of wonderful people here awesome people. a lot of students uh, uh we got to build off of this one for sure we had uh we had a couple of cool interviews on a piece of equipment we're going to put in the shop huh yep. oh yeah they're badass i don't want you guys fighting over those no we won't we'll All share right. there's two of them so okay uh man I, that was impressive they're that nice. piece of equipment was impressive there's so much cool stuff here oh yeah uh and then uh 
the camaraderie and all the the, the people, the Instagram families, and man, it's just, just the whole it's community. wonderful. The whole communities, unbelievable. Just available. Yeah, yeah really friendly, good. Um, willing, to, willing to give information out about welding and everything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. There's so much good stuff going on in the welding community and the welding world. Unbelievable right now. It's actually I'm, becoming I'm, cool. It's cool to yeah. be a welder now, yeah. Yeah. which is awesome. Yeah, no doubt. We, we fought that image thing for so long. You know, Everybody thought it was dirty, nasty, smoky work, but if they stepped up in here, they wouldn't think so. No. Nice this is like clean. stepping into clean rooms and stuff. So uh, I am definitely humbled to be a part of this great welding community. So. Sure. Yep. Yep. Fab right. Tech 2019, Chicago, Illinois. Peace. Peace.